Hello there, my name is Janie Goddard, and I just wanted to have a chat with you today about some of the really exciting new research in the field of the where the, we look at the holistic impact of positivity, kindness, and compassion on our health. Um, it's really interesting, isn't it? I think a lot, of, a lot of people tend to think that, oh, well, that's all really nice stuff. Um, but does it really impact us um, on a really, you know, measurable, uh, in a really measurable way uh, from the health perspective? Well, um, truthfully, one of the most powerful uh, well-being strategies that I know of, and one that's actually proven in research studies to really rewind our body clocks so that we become bi biologically younger is that of adopting a positive mindset. Now, I must say at this point, we may be interrupted by little baby Jesse. He's my little rescue hound and he's very sweet, but he does like to get involved. So if he does, just please bear with me and uh, we might have a we might have a guest performance. We might have a little head popping in from time to time. Hope you don't mind. Anyway, um, one of the things that we can do to really become biologically younger, which means that we aren't, it's not, it's not a, um, a sort of an egotistical thing. It's not like an anti-aging thing. I really don't like that term at all. Um, what we're talking about is remaining as biologically young as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can, because because what happens is that this staves off that descent into a chronic degenerative disease that so many people think is uh, of being a, a natural part of the aging process. When in actual fact, that could it couldn't be further from the truth. We're not destined to to go for to to end up in this this really decrepit sort of state at all. So um, really, I just wanted to emphasise the the fact that we're in so much more control of our health and well being than we could ever ever even begin to imagine. So what we do know from this recent uh, groundbreaking research is that optimists are definitely proven to live longer now. I'm not really meaning to infer that a sort of Pollyanna attitude of, oh, everything will be okay, it'll all turn out okay, the universe will provide, um, it doesn't necessarily automatically make our lives better, whether we take action or we don't. We, of course, have to take action. We have to make uh, life changes. We have to make lifestyle changes in order to be able to really um, enjoy optimal health and well-being. Um, it's important that we take responsibility for our health and that we are proactive and we take steps to improve things. But the good news is that just a little effort, even a little effort goes a very, very long way. So let's talk more about positivity. When we um, embrace feel good emotions, our thinking becomes more creative, integrative, flexible, and we are so much more open to information. So it means that we're able to take more in and to think more clearly about things. Um, what's been found in the research is that positive emotions dramatically enhance our psychological and our physical resilience. And the really interesting thing about positivity and acts of kindness and compassion and love is that they touch everybody. They affect the person giving an act of kindness, the person receiving an act of love or kindness. But interestingly, it also affects the people who are observing this act of loving kindness or a compassionate interaction. So even, funnily enough, just reading or even as you are watching or listening to information, um, articles, uh, stories of kindness and loving ca compassion and so on actually has a positive effect on our health mentally, emotionally, physically, and of course, spiritually, as you might expect. So let's talk a little bit about kindness at this point. Um, I 
don't know about you. I don't know uh, wh whether you do this. Um, little acts of kindness, um, every so often random acts of kindness. Um, I'm sure you probably do because I think most of the people tend to who who tend to watch my uh, output uh, tend to be the kind of people who who do random acts of kindness. Um, but as you probably know, and I'm sure you suspect, it has this extraordinary ripple effect, and just one very small act can have a huge impact on so many others. Um, what we know is that the compassion ripples out and positively affects individuals. Uh, the people we know, strangers, our immediate vicinity and on out into the world at large. When we think about this, um, I would have to say that I'm really reminded of meta meditation or meta loving kindness meditation, which is a way of really developing our capacity for unconditional loving kindness. If you're not familiar with meta meditation, you can go to my website and you'll be able to find a really lovely meta meditation download there that I've created just for you as a visitor to my website. Um, it's really intriguing that, that most people think that it would be difficult to study kindness from a scientific standpoint. However, it's one of the fastest growing areas within the positive psychology arena, with compassion being a particularly hot research topic. There are so many new divisions in some of the world's best universities that are actually dedicated to studying really positive things like happiness. How do we get more happiness in our lives? Positive psychology, of course, things like compassion, loving kindness, um, random acts of kindness and the actual measurable effects that they have on us and on the people that we do these acts for and, of course, any observers. So, you know, this isn't woo-woo stuff. This is actual, real, hard science. So... It's just intriguing that this is really happening at the moment, particularly at a time in the world where there are just atrocities happening left, right and centre. So isn't it wonderful to know that there is a counterbalance that is actually working to increase our knowledge and our understanding of what can be done to help others? So let's talk a little bit about compassion now. Um, and I really think that most of us innately sense that compassion, love and social support have amazing benefits for recipients. And, you know, the science really genuinely supports this. Um, back in the late 1970s, uh, there were researchers who were examining the effects of a diet that was high in fat and cholesterol in rabbits. Um, what they did uh, with this study is they had two groups of rabbits. They had one group that was fed a very high cholesterol diet, and they had obviously a control group that was just fed a normal rabbit diet. So during the study, though, a really strange anomaly became apparent. One subgroup of the rabbits had 60% less atherosclerosis than the group as a whole even though they ate exactly the same high fat experimental diet. Now, 60% is a huge difference. So nobody could figure out why this was until they looked a little bit deeper. And it finally emerged that the lab assistant who fed and cared for this particular subgroup of rabbits actually took them out of their cages, petted them, talked to them and just generally loved them before feeding them. The study was repeated twice with the same results and it was then reported in the really highly esteemed science journal, Science. Um, it's a really intriguing study because you know there's no medicine, uh, no conventional medicine that can have that sort of effect of reducing atherosclerosis by a whopping 60%. So just this act of kindness was incredibly power powerful from a physical perspective. Doesn't it really just start to blow the mind? I mean, it really is just extraordinary, isn't it? So 
obviously what we do know is that these findings were gained from animals now and of course as we know that doesn't necessarily translate to us humans but what we do know from human studies is that love closeness caring and more is incredibly important for our health and well-being um in fact, back in the 1990s, there was a group of researchers who revisited a very famous study that had been conducted among nuns who'd written short personal essays about their lives. The researchers found that the nuns who expressed the highest number of positive emotions lived on average 10 years longer and in even I think even more intriguingly, they were somewhat protected from dementia. So selflessness and altruism also lead to happiness and health. Um, there was a fairly recent study that showed that a group of retired people over the age of 65 who had volunteered to help others had significantly higher levels of life satisfaction and what's called will to live. Um, and they had far fewer symptoms of depression, anxiety, and somatization. Now, somatization used to be called psychosomatic illness. It's a term that became very stigmatized uh, with many doctors, uh, you know, back, back in the day, dismissing patients with statements like, oh, it's all in your head, or you're just a neurotic person. And of course, these particular accusations were very much targeted towards women as a result of uh, overwhelming medical misogyny uh, back then. It still exists, but thankfully not to nearly the levels that it used to exist back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even as far as the 80s and even the 90s. And I, I remember um, going in to see a doctor to talk about, um, oh, I don't know, I think it was uh, menopausal, um, menopausal questions that I had as I was per perimenopausal at the time. And just being told by this male doctor that, oh, yes, well, you know, you're a woman, you should expect to feel tired, you should expect hair loss, you should expect to be gaining weight. Um, and I said to him, well, no, that's actually not true. It doesn't necessarily automatically happen. Um, I was there to discuss something else anyway, and I'd only just brought this up in conversation. But I was really shocked at the way that um, I was dismissed along with my symptoms um, by this doctor who was saying, well, you know, that's it. You're just a, a silly woman and on your way, um, you know, just expect to have a rubbish, you know, quality of life uh, from now on. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but let me know. Let me know in the comments below, because it, it's really important that we discuss these things as women, um, you know, and the more that we discuss them, the more we get this stuff out into the open, the more we each realize that we're not alone. And and that, you know, our sisters are going through the same thing. Um, and, you know, it's not abnormal to be dismissed by the medical, dare I say, fraternity, uh, because it is usually men that do the dismissing. Um, and so really just wanted to say, let me know um, if you, A, if you've got any questions or B, if you've had any experiences, because it truly helps all of us to know that we're not alone. So moving back uh, to the topic, um, excuse my little side rant there, but, and I hope you don't mind, but I think these things are important. But as I say, circling back to our topic, let's talk a little bit about happiness now. Um, altruistic behavior is linked to improved levels of well-being, better morale, greater self-esteem and improved positive emotions. There's also much less depression among people who help others. People who do voluntary work experience higher levels of happiness, and they also enjoy enhanced overall wellness as well. This, uh, there is, there's actually a phenomenon called the helper's high. Um, in fact, and it's really interesting, it's an actual high sensation that we get, a distinct physical sensation that is associated with helping others. Um, so Lux, L-U-K-S, and his colleagues actually did this research, and their findings were that 50% of the people helping others uh, reported a high feeling, actually feeling high. 43% uh, felt stronger and more energetic, 28% uh, felt felt physically warm, 
physically, actually, oh, I feel really nice and toasty warm. 22% um, felt calmer and less depressed. 21% felt greater self-worth. 13% uh, experienced fewer aches and pains. And the really interesting thing about these effects of kindness, compassion, and altruism is that the effects of doing these actions can be measured physiologically. So for example, in one study, there were older adults massaging babies and the older adults had measurably lower levels of stress hormones, including cortisol, which can be measured in saliva. And they also had lower levels of plasma, norepinephrine and epinephrine, or if you're here in the UK, noradrenaline and adrenaline. Um, so it goes to show that just by doing something lovely for a little baby, just giving the baby a massage, reduces one's own stress. Isn't that, it's fascinating, isn't it? I, I don't know about you, but I just find this absolutely endlessly fascinating. Um, and importantly, what's really interesting is if things like cortisol and adrenaline or um, epinephrine and so on are reduced, so too is chronic inflammation. And this improves health dramatically in the present and in the future. So as we know, and as you've heard me say many, many times, chronic inflammation underpins, it's the, the common denominator of all of those illnesses that we wrongly associate with being a natural part of the aging process. So I'm talking about things like uh, lifestyle mediated uh, cancers, obviously heart disease, type two diabetes, arthritis, autoimmunity, even the neurological conditions, um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and other dementias. Um, so, you know, by doing acts of kindness, if we can reduce our, our, our stress hormones, thereby reducing our chronic inflammation, we are really essentially preventing ourselves from you know, descending into that absolutely horrendous pit of terrible, devastating illness in old age. So just seeing kindness and compassion in action actually makes you physically and emotionally more resilient, as does, interestingly enough, thinking about love. Um, there was a lovely study where students were asked to watch a film about Mother Teresa's work, um, or they were given the task of dwelling on love and writing an essay about it. Um, after the two tasks were undertaken, it was found that there was a significant increase in immune protective salivary immunoglobulin. So that's A, SIG A in both groups. SIG A is our first line of defense in our resistance to infection. Aside from the vast benefit of a greatly improved immune system, positivity and taking positive life-affirming actions can also help in the following ways. So what we find is that we get decreased blood pressure and a reduced risk of heart disease. Cardiovascular risk is dramatically reduced in people who have a more positive outlook in life. And conversely, though, we see an elevated risk for these diseases in people who describe themselves as being lonely. It's yet another reason to go and volunteer, perhaps as a visitor, for elderly or lonely people. We have many programs in the UK, and I'm sure that other countries have them as well, where you can actually become a befriender of elderly, isolated or lonely people. Um, and again, you know, yes, you're doing them a huge um, amount of good. But of course, also, there's no such thing as a one ended stick. You are also massively benefiting, not just psychologically and emotionally, but physically as well. So what about physical resilience and healing? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have a little sip of my tea. It's, I'm English. It's uh, gone four o'clock. It's definitely time for tea. And also because I've been speaking in meetings all day, my voice is starting to go. So do forgive me for that. Um, so, and Jesse, you're sitting on my hair. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. So people who have positive thoughts, 
also have better coping skills. As a result, they're better at healing after a medical setback. Not only is the immune system improved, as mentioned above, but healing after surgical procedures, fractures and other acute industries has been shown to be faster in optimists, which is pretty amazing. Um, also, let's look at pain, uh, pain tolerance and whether there's a difference in, in the ability to tolerate pain. Um, it's been found in the research that when we think positively, our minds are able to focus on other things. And this has been found to reduce our experience of pain and discomfort. So you might have the same pain level as somebody else, but it's our perception, our experience of that pain and discomfort. It's not as profound or catastrophic as somebody who doesn't have a positive outlook. Um, Positivity also increases our self-esteem and, and helps uh, create better relationships. So what we know again from looking at the research, I said there's a lot of it, um, good self-esteem enables us to have more confidence in ourselves and any situation we find ourselves in. This can lead directly to an improved social life and the research shows that people who have strong social connections particularly if we're working together with a group of friends, for example, towards a common goal, we can reap the rewards of a potential extra nine years of healthy life. Now, this is important because, <clears throat> as, as we know, um, in developed countries, our lifespan has been increasing, although in some areas, uh, for example, in the food desert areas and so on, our lifespan is actually shrinking again. But overall, lifespan is increasing. But unfortunately, our health span has been decreasing. So this is really bad news because what it means is that if we become sicker younger, we are going to live for more years with, with devastating chronic disease, and none of us want that. If you ask anybody, you, do you want to live to a ripe old age? Most people will tend to say, well, yes, but only if I'm healthy, or uh, not if I'm not healthy. Um, and so absolutely understandable. Nobody wants to you know, live terrible, in terrible agony and, and decrepitude for many, many, many years. It's just, it's just terrible. So um, you know, this is really interesting, isn't it? That just the simple fact of socializing with a group of friends, perhaps working together for a common goal, it actually can add up to nine healthy years to your life. Isn't that crazy? That's without it making any other lifestyle adjustments. So if you start doing all of the other lifestyle adjustments, like following a really healthy um, whole food plant-based diet and excluding um, things like added refined salt, oil, and sugar. So following the SOS whole food plant-based diet, uh, which is extremely healthy and, and all of the research studies back that up by taking adequate exercise by making sure that you get adequate sleep um, women need more sleep than men most of the sleep studies have been done on men and say well you need about eight hours sleep the truth of the matter actually is that women need more sleep and we probably need about nine to nine and a half hours sleep a night so women are chronically sleep deprived so it's really important that we do look at our sleep hygiene as, as women really really crucial um and then also of course you know we we've got things like uh just things like stress response management so if you pop on over to my website um obviously we've got the lovely meta meditation that i'm I, i'm putting up there for you uh completely free to download but also i've got other other really lovely tools there for you that are completely free uh things like uh, my yoga nidra uh, recording for deep restorative sleep, things like my relaxation response instructional recording. There's all sorts of goodies over there. Please go have at it. My gift to you. We all need to really take care of ourselves um, more so now than ever. Um, we're living in an incredibly fast paced lifestyle and environment um, with so much negativity coming at us left, right and center. We have to protect ourselves so that we can protect our loved ones. Um, so, you know, I hope this information is useful for you. Please let me know what your thoughts are, um, what you do to stay healthy, whether you have any questions for me, or indeed, if there are any particular topics that you would like me to 
cover coming up soon. Um, as you know, I love to talk about everything to do with um, biological aging, uh, women's health and well-being, natural beauty. That's my kind of wheelhouse. So, you know, please don't be a stranger. Let me have your comments below. And also, please do go over and join my Rewind Your Body Clock group on on YouTube and all of the sorry I should say on Facebook all of the details are actually below this video in the show notes so just click on the little more dot 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 thing and you'll see all of the contact details thank you so much and I really am so grateful to you for joining me today look out for more videos coming soon where we can enjoy a beautiful cup of tea together and put the world to rights much love to you all. Take care. Bye-bye.